Hey guys, how you doing? This is Coach Scott, and uh, this is our pre-lab for our lab on observing chemical reactions. So let's talk about this real quick. So we're ready for lab when uh, the, tomorrow, whenever we get ready to do. So it's really important to watch this video. So since ancient times, humans have pondered and thought about what is stuff. What's the nature of stuff? Thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago, some humans speculated all matter was made up of some combination of four elements. Earth, air, fire, and water. According to this theory, every unique substance would be made up of different combination of these four elements. Now, in ancient Greece, uh, around 460 BC to 370 BC, a philosopher named Democritus formulated what is thought to be the first atomic theory. Democritus reasoned that matter must be made up of tiny, indivisible spheres he called atomos. So that's a Greek word that means indivisible, moving through empty space. He was right. Atoms are small. If you make a tiny dot with the tip of a sharp graphite pencil, guess how many atoms of carbon would be in that small dot? Well, it would be 4 times 10 to the 24th atoms. That's a bunch. 4 with 24 zeros after it. Four million, 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 billion, million atoms. That's a whole bunch. So they've got to be very small. So um, about 2,000 years uh, from Democritus, uh, it took around that time for humans to prove that atoms are the building blocks of matter. So in the meantime, the study of alchemy was a major per precursor to modern chemistry. Alchemists would try to transform matter to convert base metals into gold or to create powerful potions. Now, Isaac Newton, the famous physicist, famous, uh, famously pr practiced alchemy. He tried to turn stuff into gold. Now, as we now know, elements like gold can only be formed in the intense heat and pressure of exploding stars. So, through controlled experiments and observations, alchemy evolved into the branch of science that now we call chemistry. Now, by the 1800s, a couple of major principles had been established. One was the law of conservation of mass. For any system closed to all transfers of matter and energy, okay, and both of which, by the way, have mass, the mass of the system must remain constant or be conserved over time. So this law implies that mass can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only change forms. All right, so that's the law of conservation of mass. You might want to know that. The other one, the atomic theory. And uh, this theory or this model said matter is composed of atoms. So in a chemical reaction, atoms are neither created or destroyed, but they are rearranged. So in 1808 and 1808, John Dalton published his atomic theory, and it contained six postulates. And you probably want to know these. All matter consists of indivisible particles called atoms. Atoms of the same element are similar in shape and mass, but they differ from the atoms of other elements. Atoms cannot be created or destroyed, and atoms of different elements may combine with, with each other in a fixed, simple, whole number ratio to form compound atoms. 
atoms of the same element can combine in more than one ratio to form two or more compounds. And number six, the atom is the smallest unit of matter that can take part in a chemical reaction. So, uh, many of those findings of his postulates are very consistent with modern scientific theory, but some of them have been disproved. So, uh, we now know that atoms are divisible. And what are the parts of the atom called? Do you all remember? You're finding out? Okay, we're going to find out what those later, but you might remember from previous classes, you got protons, neutrons, and electrons. So, Dalton arrived at this theory by gathering data from chemical reactions. And during a chemical reaction, a substance or substances can be transformed into chemically different substances. So there are some indicators of a chemical reaction. One, you could have a change in temperature, such as wood burning or fireworks exploding. A change in color, like metal rusting. The production of a nasty, noxious odor, odor like an egg rotting. The formation of a precipitate. A precipitate is a solid when I combine two liquids. Or the formation of bubbles, like a gas, like the carbon dioxide that makes bread rise, or the Alka-Seltzer you put in water, pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Yeah. In some cases, the properties of a substance may change, although the substance will remain the same. Now, we call these changes physical changes. So let's think, take an example. Water can be turned from a free-flowing liquid into a hard solid, a hard cube, ice, right? Its properties have changed, but it's still water. Let's look at some examples. Uh, when I sand wood, I go from a rough texture to a nice smooth structure. Yeah. Uh, changing in shape, such as when I pull a block of metal into a wire, are changes in state, like freezing, melting, boiling, condensing. So, that's just a little idea of what we're going to be dealing with. So, the goals of this lab are to what? Observe a number of chemical reactions. Outline the indications that a chemical reaction has occurred while observing these chemical reactions in this lab. Then, outlining those changes in properties are changes in energy that result from the chemical reactions that you're going to observe and differentiate between a physical and a chemical change. So you're going to need an acetate sheet, an overhead sheet, a reaction grid, which is a piece of paper where you're going to put stuff, and I'll, I'll give you one of those. You'll need to wear your goggles. If you don't have your goggles, uh, yeah, I'm going to send you down to a office to set. Now these are the solutions we're going to use. You're going to use hydro one molar hydrochloric acid. Be careful with this. Don't get it on your skin. It will hurt. Uh, 0 0.1 molar copper 2 sulfate, a nice blue solution. Uh, 0 0.1 molar of potassium iodide. And uh, 0 0.1 molar lead 2 nitrate. Those are all um, solids in a solution with water. They're, 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 they're mixed up, if you would. Then we're going to use these zinc metal chips, right? We call it mossy zinc. It's good stuff. So, um, some safety. Always wear your goggles, all right, when you're completing the lab. And then wear your goggles when you're near someone else that's working with chemicals. Know where the eye wash station is in the shower in the room. We went over that. And if you get any chemicals in your eye, you need to go to the eye wash immediately. Now, if any of the chemicals come in contact on your skin, start washing them off with lots of water, and then let me know what you spilled as you're going to go rinse them off. Don't mix stuff that I did not tell you to mix. And then always tell me of any accidents. And then there's going to be no eating or drinking in the laboratory work area. I'll show you where you can drink water only. So, in the lab procedures, 
it'll tell you to where to place a couple of drops of the reagents or the chemicals and which ones they are, the A, B, C, D, or E, okay, and identify what those are. Then put those two chemicals on the acetate sheet, okay, which is on the grid so you know where to place them. And then you're going to make observations and note the observations in your lab sheet on your computer. So after you mix each set of the chemicals, note what you see. And after you've mixed your last set of chemicals, look at all the other reactions to see if there's any new changes. Sometimes chemical reactions are slow and you may be surprised what you're going to see after some time has passed. So let's talk about some questions. Which of the following is not a chemical change? Give you a second. And that would be D, sugar dissolving. Okay, that's really not a chemical change. It's still sugar in water. A change in physical properties always occur when there's a chemical reaction. What do you think? Yes or no? Mm, I'd probably say yeah, because you're making a new substance. When an egg is boiled, its physical properties change. Now, in your own words, what are these changes in its physical properties? And then I'll let you think on those, maybe record them, and uh, anyway, Guys, let's get ready to do our lab. We'll have fun doing it. Hopefully you'll learn some stuff. This is Coach Scott saying have a wonderful evening.